Welcome to the testing world. In this session, we will understand how we can work on Git. Before moving to the Git, we need to understand why we are going to use Git. Okay, so we are working in a team and any automation, we are working in a team. I have developed some code and I want to share this code to my team members. And in the same way, uh, my team is also working on some automation cases and they want to share their code with me. So how we can go for this code sharing? Either we can create a share, share folder and put all the code over there, but that it's not a good approach because if I put some code over there and somebody else deleted that, I'm not able to track it. Or I have updated a file and somebody else has removed my changes, how I can track it. So it could be an option, but it's not a be best option. Now we have a software with the name Git, G-I-T. We can call it source management software. So with the help of the Git, we can manage our code, we can share our code with the team. So it will be helpful when a team is working on any automation project. So Git and GitHub and these two things, Git and GitHub are different. So I'll explain you what do you mean by the Git or what do you mean by the GitHub. So first of all, before moving to the Git, we have to understand a word a repository. What is repository? So when we are sharing our code, so we are placing it somewhere. It could be a share folder or it could be a folder on the remote location. So where, wherever we are sharing our code, that is called repository. When we are working on the Git, we have to create a local repository, which will be on my system and one remote repository, which will be placed remotely. I'll show you what does it mean. But repository could, can be understand the location where my code will be placed. Next, we need to understand what is Git and what is GitHub. So first of all, what is Git? As we discussed, Git is a source code management software. Here we have many other softwares which are doing the same task. One is TFS. It's a team foundation server. It's from, it, you will get it from Microsoft. So normally when you are working on .NET framework, you will get TFS for code management. In the same way we have SVN, it's a Apache SVN. We can use SVN for the same as well. But here we are going to use Git. So what I understand here, Git is a source code management software for me, but it's not managing our source code only. It is giving many other features. Okay. What all the features we are getting track changes in the file. Okay. I have created a file and placed into a shared location it, and somebody else is coming and change that file. We can track whatever the changes took place and whoever made these changes. It is going to manage our source that we have already covered versioning and branching. That's important. When, when we are working on an application, so we have seen a lot of versions are coming to of the application. So this versioning can be done like what code we are going to push into the next version and which code is going to place in the, in which particular version. So that kind of versioning can be done by using Git and branching. Like we can create multiple branches of the same code. If I have a team member, he is new to my team. He, uh, I don't want to give complete access of my code to the person. We can go for the branching. Compare code like I have written some code and somebody else has made the changes in the same file. I can compare the files. What all the changes has been done on the file or we can compare with the current file with the previous version of the file. Merge branches. Okay. Uh, Fresher is working on a particular branch and I check he has written the comp correct code. I, I want to make it to the master means I want to merge that branch. We can do that. We can compare branches. That kind of task can be done by using Git. GitHub. GitHub is a web based repository hosting service. Okay. When we are working on a Git, first of all, we are creating a repository or I'll say local repository on our machine. I'm creating my local repository. My team members are creating their own local repository on their machines. Later on, we are going to put whatever we have put in our local repository to the centralized repository and that, cent that centralized repository, you can find it on the GitHub. So GitHub is a web based repository hosting service. So here we can create centralized repository or I'll say remote repositories to understand it more. I'm going to show you one example. So here I'm taking example, like I'm working in a team and that's my system. Right. I have started my automation project. So I have written some code over here. So what we are going to do, first of all, whatever the code 
whatever the code I'm doing here, I have to store this code into a local repository and this local repository w will exist will exist on my system. So that is a local repository which we are going to create. So I just give the name local repository. So first of all, whenever we start our automation, we are, we are pushing our code into the local repository and then we have a centralized repository. We can call it remote repository as well. So remote repository. Whatever the code we have saved into the local repository, we can transfer that code into the remote repository. And this process is called like when we are pushing our code into the local repository, we call it commit. I have committed some code. And when we are taking this code to the remote repository, we call it push. I have pushed my code to the remote repository. We need to understand this local repository will exist on your system itself. In the same way, I have another team member who is working my team. So he is working on his system and he want to use the code which I have placed in shared repository or I'll say remote repository. So first of all, he will also have a local repository. He will clone my code into the local and then going to use it. So here he is going to do cloning. This process is called cloning. When we are taking code first time, we call it I'm clone that code. I'm cloning that code. Okay. Now as a team member, I have made some changes in that code and whatever the changes I have done, I want to put into the remote repository so that my other team members can use it. So what I'll do, first of all, I'll put my code into local repository. And again, when we are putting our code into the local repository, we call it commit. I'm committing my code and I'm pushing my code to centralized repository or I'll say remote repository. So I'm here pushing my code. So now team member A has started the code and B taken that code or I'll say clone that code, made changes and push into the remote repository. Now as a team member A, I want to take changes which are done by the team member B. So what I can do, I'm going to take pull. Pull means I'm not taking complete repository. I'm just getting pull means changes. And now once we get the changes, I can use it. So that's the overall process. So here Git is going to work on local machines, on the machines on which we are working. So Git is working on this side and GitHub is a web-based repository hosting service. So here on the GitHub, we can create remote repositories. That's the overall process we are going to do while working on source management. So in this session, we have seen what is Git and what is GitHub. Now I'll show you how we can create account on the GitHub and then I'll show you how we can start working on Git. That's all we have for this session. Thanks for watching this video.